they're the best in the world at what they do. But of course, you don't get that way without putting in the work. Today, we'll focus on the preseason to the 2014 Mountain Dew ATV National Motocross Championship and see the work that goes on behind the scenes to be able to perform when the gate drops for the opener. As this championship has been around for over 30 years, the tuning has become more scientific. Riders have learned through trial and error how to improve their machines, their skills, their fitness, and even their mental game. By replicating everything they'll deal with at the racetrack, at their practice tracks at home. In all, it leads talented riders in the world as the best riders in the world. And we'll profile them next on Racer TV. Welcome to our preview show of the 2014 Mountain Dew ATV Motocross Championship. We'll be brought to you exclusively here on MAV TV. Jason Wygant, your host, and we are deep in the heart of Texas to begin our preseason show with Sean Taylor, a rookie who was third last year in the Pro Am division, who now wants to step it up in the Pro Class for 2014. Let's get to know the new kid. Hey, I'm Sean Taylor. I'm 25 years old, and I'm from Montezuma, Iowa. My normal days when we're down here training or go to the gym or work out here at the track. Um, usually trying to ride by 11.30 or noon and get to uh, do my two motos, I do two 20 minute motos a day or if I switch it up we'll do, I'll do a day of sprint motos to where they're just a few laps at a time but I do several of them throughout the day. Being a young kid when you start doing this you, you know your friends are out doing things and so when you come down here and you see your friends post, posting on social networks and of all the fun stuff that they're doing back home. It kind of sucks because you're kind of missing out on life of with your friends and you know living the life as a kid rather than being stuck at a track and riding a four-wheeler and like basically doing that as your job but I love being on a four-wheeler and I love being out here doing this and like look at us right now we're sitting out on a on a jump the tracks behind us and listen how quiet it is. It's amazing to be out here. The sacrifices Sean Taylor are making are not exclusive to him. We go to Palm City, Florida to find Jeff Restrelli, a rider who was new to the pro class last year and is looking to make an impact this year. Restrelli is no stranger to the hard work, although he puts it in, in Florida and Texas. There are many similarities. I'm Jeffrey Estrelli. I'm from Palm City, Florida. I'm 20 years old. I ride a K&M in the ATV Pro Class. I started racing for my dad. He used to run in the Pro Class back in the day, uh, I think in the 80s. And um, I started actually riding dirt bikes and <clears throat> didn't, didn't like them that much. And uh, my dad got me a four-wheeler and I got on them and just took off from there. We went to the first national when I was 10 years old and uh, been racing them ever since. A day down here in Florida, um, Training is just pretty much getting up in the morning and go for a run and then uh, work on your bike a little bit, go ride, maybe come back and uh, go to the trainer at night at the gym and, and uh, just put the work in really. This is, uh, it's a non-stop job just like anything else. It's, uh, it's, it's really tough. The sacrifices I've made for racing motocross is really just you're, you're kind of an outcast in school or, or uh, with your friends or anything just because you, you have to dedicate so much time to motocross and it's just not like a, a weekend thing now, you know, it's, you have to take a time out of every day and, and it's, it's a season and it's eight months out of the year so you only get a little bit of free time and I don't take anything for granted here doing this and uh, I uh, just have fun doing what I'm doing. What I missed before racing is, is really nothing. I mean, it, it's been my life since I was a little kid and I really know nothing else and I can't imagine doing anything different or, or changing it right now. And uh, I've always dreamed to do this and, and I'm doing it and um, I'm living it to the fullest and I'm having a great time doing it. Welcome back to Racer TV's season preview of the 2014 Mountain Dew ATV Motocross Championship. Let's talk about one of the veterans in the game, the number 20 of Josh Upperman. 
he's from Ohio, but like a lot of the top riders, spends as much of the preseason as possible down in Florida in his training in. Sacrifices for him mean juggling racing and working. Hey guys, my name is Josh Upperman. I'm 28 years old, born and raised in Louisville, Ohio. I raced the uh, TRX 450R Honda in the uh, ATV MX Nationals. Uh, how I started racing and kind of got into the whole sport of things was uh, um, I'm a, I was kind of a late bloomer into, into racing because I didn't start until I was 16, but my family's always been around the whole uh, uh, four wheelers and we actually started out on three wheelers back in the day, but um, you know, my uncle uh, kind of uh, mentioned to me and was like, hey, you should go try out a race. And uh, you know, next thing you know, I went to a race, got hooked from there, and uh, but 13 years later, I'm right here. <laughs> A day in the off season, um, you know, I basically wake up, eat a good breakfast. Uh, I either go for a uh, a run, um, a bike ride, or uh, get on a like a Schwinn Aerodyne bike and uh, do anywhere from a half hour to 45 minutes of cardio. Um, I normally go and I put two two motos in a day, um, consist of anywhere from 20 to 30 minute motos, and um, basically come back and get ready to get a good dinner and go to sleep and do it all over again. I actually own my own business in landscaping uh, back in Ohio. Um, I try to do that for seven, eight months. I mean, sometimes nine months out of the year and uh, try to save enough money and build enough money up to do this and um, you know support my, whatever I need to do. And, um, but like I said, I'd, I'd, love to, I'd love to call this my full-time job, but it's kind of, you know, part-time here and part-time my other job. My, uh, my favorite hobby outside of racing would probably be um, probably going golfing with my friends. I, I really like to go uh, hit the links and, uh, you know, have fun and uh, just mess around. Something that I'm not good at, something that I'm not horrible at, but it's just, it's always challenging and it's fun. For some, ATV racing is a lifestyle. And we go down to Houston, Texas to find one of the great champions of the sport, John Natale, along with his wife and daughter, and really the entire Natale family. They're now passing their lessons on to the next generation. Here's John. Hi, I'm John Natale. I'm 38 years old, and I'm from Houtsdale, Pennsylvania. Well, let's see, a day in, the, in my off season usually consists of, you know, waking up at seven o'clock in the morning, uh, uh, getting ready and getting some people gathered up with the Natale experience and uh, taking them to the gym. We'll work out in the gym for a few hours, coming back to the track, uh, doing a bunch of riding for, you know, four, three or four hours, and then maybe even doing a, a workout after um, after riding during the day, uh, jogging the track, doing push-ups, whatever we decide to do. And then that evening after, you know, it's everything settles down, it's time to take care of the bikes and uh, do some maintenance and cleaning and get it all ready to start again the next day. You know, there's there's not really a lot that I can remember before racing. I mean, I, I, I've always known just being on a four-wheeler or a three-wheeler and riding and, uh, you know, my family was always together doing it. It was It's always been a family oriented thing where you know if we went riding it was you know me and my sister and and my dad and my mom and my whole family was there all the time um, I guess it's it's hard for me to say I, I really don't know like I said my life is racing and that and that's all I've ever known and all I can remember back when I believe I was around 12 years old uh, 13 somewhere in there I used to ride all the time in the woods with a bunch of my friends and a couple of them had actually raced and uh, they watched me and said that you know I could I could ride pretty good and I should maybe give uh, racing a, a shot. So that's what we did. I talked to my parents and we went and actually uh, bought a Banshee. It was my first bike that I raced and the very first race I was in, I was actually doing really well. I think I was in second or third place and ended up crashing really hard. And ever since then, it was uh, it's been uh, I guess in my blood. It was an addiction. It's the, the, what I love to do. Welcome back to our season preview show at the 2014 Mountain Dew ATV Motocross Championship 
In South Carolina, we find one of the sport's greatest rising stars, Joel Hetrick, arguably the fastest rider in the game already, a multi-time champion, amateur and youth division, with a family that's super dedicated to the sport at all levels. That dedication causes sacrifice, but Joel's okay with it. I'm Joel Hetrick, 21 years old, and I'm from Seneca, Pennsylvania. Uh, I started racing when my grandpa bought me an LT80 back in probably 96, and uh, we just went from there. I mean, my dad was already racing, so kind of got into it from them and never stopped. If I didn't race motocross, I don't really know what I would do. My parents started a shop so long ago that if it wasn't for motocross, they probably wouldn't have it, and that's just that's where I'd be at. If I wasn't racing, I'd be there. Uh, but if they didn't have it, I don't know. I have no clue. Probably college. Well, sacrifices I've made to race, uh, I would say pretty much my whole childhood, I traveled the country racing and didn't have all the friends to hang out with all the time from school and do all the events that the school had. So, I mean, I would say I did have a good childhood racing, so I can't complain. My best race would probably have to be Unadilla 2011, my rookie year of pro. Uh, I came out and got the whole shots and won by five seconds each moto and that was my rookie year of pro and that's never been done before. So I was very, very happy about that. I mean, first year in pro and I won two races actually. I won that one and Loretta Lynn's. So it was a pretty epic year for me. I'm most nervous, probably for the first gate drop, just because you don't know where everyone's at for the first race and it's kind of hard to judge them off time qualifying. So I would definitely say the first first moto gate drop is where I'm kind of tense and expecting a lot from everyone and expecting a lot from myself. Off season training, I usually get up in the morning, go to the gym at eight, uh, come back, prep the bike, do some hole shots before the motos, um, go out and do at least two motos a day. Most of the time we do three just to be safe and try to make it like a race day and do the best we can every single day off, off season so when we get to that first round we don't get tired and just want to make the team up front and that's what I plan to do. Now we head to Alabama to profile last year's third place rider in the Mountain Dew ATV National Motocross Championship. His name is Josh Kramer, and he's not intimidated by anyone. Former champ wants it back this year. I'm Josh Kramer, 28 years old, from North Stonington, Connecticut. I race a Can am DS450 in the AMA Pro ATV class. I started racing back in 2003 and I never even really knew they raced full wheelers until 2002. Uh, I went to a Southwick National and watched some guys on two strokes and um, it looked like fun. And I was still in high school at the time, but I just decided I wanted to do it the next year. So I went and got a full wheeler and started racing in 2003 and it turned out I had a pretty good knack for it. I'm a pretty lucky guy right now. I'm. I'm getting a paycheck racing and um, you know I might not be saving a whole lot of money but at least this is my full-time job right now and you know like I said I'm a real lucky guy I was doing it for you know, four years and I was making pretty good money at it and unfortunately that all got taken away from me but um, I was lucky to have Can-Am step up and BCS step up and help me out tremendously last season and it's been tough just dealing with the weather sometimes I got to come out here and work on the track other times I'll go to the gym um, and it's usually the track work or gym um, but my days uh, you know when it's track work we're just trying to dry this place up get it back to normal um, just dealing been dealing with a lot of rain this this winter but uh, yeah, then just get the bike ready to moto and usually I do three three 22 minute motos a day sometimes four depending on how how I'm feeling and um, you know if I don't go to the gym in the morning I go at night and just try to get some cardio in probably half hour hour worth of cardio and then I do a lot of core workouts it seems to help me um, 
I haven't really stepped up my off the bike training program yet just due to my ACL surgery that I had back in September. Um, it's actually been six months now so it's starting to feel really good and um, we're going to see how this first race goes and if I got to pick it up then I got to pick it up. If not then I'm still going to pick it up because uh, I want to win this year. At the top of the standings last year, a one-two punch with the Yamaha Wienan Motorsports SSI decals team. Thomas Brown put in the best performance of his career, got his first ever overall victory, and was a runner-up in this series. He's originally from Texas, he's one of the most fun-loving riders out there, and he's hungry for a title this time. Uh, Thomas Brown, 24 years old, from Sanger, Texas, racing uh, AMA Pro ATV class. Racing started for me at a young age, I think I was like 10 years old. Uh, my old man always took us riding and all kinds of trail riding areas. One day they had a cross country race going on and they didn't have enough classes so they came, or enough riders in the Pee Wee class and they're like, ah, oh, you want to race? And uh, we're like, yeah, sure, why not? So we ended up racing that and then that same series had a motocross series and we started trying the motocross and ended up uh, turning into a full-time career. Came through the ranks, got an uh, amateur title, a few amateur titles, a mini title and then went pro and now we're chasing after that overall championship. Ah, in the sport I've made a lot of sacrifices. I mean, this year I obviously got my own place in Texas which allows me to be home a lot more. In past years I was home for two, three months out of the year so that was always a, a tough thing. You know, at the beginning I enjoyed traveling and doing all the traveling and then, man, you start getting homesick and each year you get homesick sooner and sooner so being able to be home now and Working from there is a lot better, but that was probably the biggest thing is uh, over the years is just missing all the good times around the house. Uh, I mean, I got homeschooled halfway through high school, so never did any of that stuff. I don't regret it at all, uh, but uh, I definitely learned a lot of life experiences, but it, I always think it'd been cool to do just the normal uh, kid stuff sometimes, but man, I've uh, had a blast doing it this way. Normal day for me, wake up, do some cardio. Uh, and Nate Hibbs normally help me get the bikes ready and we throw some motos down at the house. Uh, some mornings we do a little cardio in the gym, sometimes we go on a run. Uh, this year's been different. It's uh, having my own place in Texas and pushing hard there. Uh, it's nice having a track right outside the shop door and being able to put motos in and then just after motos try to relax in the evenings and hang out with some friends. But then every morning to about dusk is uh, hard work either on the track or in the gym. This year I'm uh, looking forward to a championship, you know, that's obviously the main goal is to uh, go out there and win races and win a championship. Uh, I expect nothing less out of myself. Uh, and further years in the sport, man, I just want to keep keep going, keep winning championships. I'd like to be known as the best. Uh, that's that's probably my primary goal is just to be known as the best. It's uh, It'd be a great honor to be there and I'm going to keep pushing and hopefully succeed in that. In Daytona, Florida, we find the champion, Chad Weenan. Now with two titles under his belt, the big man originally from Illinois knows the competition will be knocking on the door harder than ever. So he has to work harder than ever this year to try to hold them off. Weenan especially excels on rough racetracks where he can use his long, lanky frame to muscle the machine over the jumps and whoops. But he's become an all-arounder as well, learning the craft of consistency, starts, and everything that makes up a champion. Hi, I'm Chad Weenan. I'm 29 years old from Galena, Illinois. I race in the AMA Pro HV Motocross Series on a YFZ 450R. Uh, I first started racing when I was 16 years old, local non-sanctioned event, and uh, a couple of my friends got together, we went out and did it. Actually won my first, my first moto uh, in the B class and actually ended up crashing out in the second moto and you know just kind of was hooked from there and you know just kind of kept building my way up into the rankings and you know this is where I stand today. So a day in my shoes in the off season would consist of you know us waking up uh, usually going to yoga and you know running you know always something to do, get the blood flowing in the morning and then you know we have you know our daily thing that we do every day we'll go out to eat lunch every day and you know we usually go to firehouse to go eat so it's uh, kind of a tradition around here to do and also you know we go ride motos and you know Plenty of activity, road biking, you know, it's 
everybody pushes each other around here, so it's a uh, time flies, you know, around here. So before racing, I got to really hang out with, you know, more of my friends back home, and that's probably one of the things that I really miss most about, you know, not being able, to, not being able to be home all the time. But you know, I wouldn't give it up for anything, you know, what I do, and you know, I get to hang out with them a little bit and see family plenty, but you know, that's one of the things that I miss. Uh, some of the sacrifices that I've made, you know, to race motocross would probably be the biggest thing is probably a college education, and you know, just getting that under my belt and having that so when I do end up stepping away from motocross, you know, whenever that day will be, you know, that'll probably be one of the bigger things that I did miss out on. And you know, also, you know, that's just one of those things that you got to think about. You know, when you get done racing, what do you pursue next? So if I wasn't racing motocross, I'd probably you know, I had a real passion for playing football and you know, that's when I was in high school I was, you know, felt like I was a good player at it and I would probably pursue that if I wasn't in, uh, into motocross. I'd say, you know, I'm usually cool, calm and collected, but you know, there has been races where, you know, it's definitely always a start and everything building up to it and it seems like once the, once the 30 second car goes sideways, you know, you kind of just forget about what everything's going on and focus on what you're doing. And, that's definitely one of the more nerve-wracking points is going up to that moment. My hero in life would have to be my dad, and you know I've looked up to him, you know, my whole life, and you know the sacrifices that he's made to get me where I'm at today. And you know he's he wasn't like a moto dad or anything like that. He just kind of you know supported what I did, and you know he comes to a, a ton of my events a year, and you know he's just uh, one of my biggest supporters and always has been, and you know and I really look up to him. You know, I like to, I like to, you know, train, work out, and that seems like more of a hobby to me than anything, you know, than the working aspect. But you know, golfing would have to be the probably my favorite. It's tough. I really don't have it down very much, and you know, it's a, it's a struggle. And then, you know, I, I think that's one of the things that were, you know, the challenges really keeps me focused on what I'm doing, and you know, I'm always up for a challenge. And here's the challenge laying in front of the riders this year. Nine races stretching from spring through summer. Last year's tour really blanketed by mud and rain. The riders hoping for better conditions this year. But regardless, your champion will be the best all-around rider. And we'll be bringing you all the races this year on MAV-TV. For everyone involved, I'm Jason Wygant. Thanks for watching.